lovely people my name is Emma and today we are talking about fiction books that I didn't overly enjoy my reading experience of but I still feel comfortable recommending to you because I think that you might enjoy them based on some of the information that I'm going to give you today. This is actually the second part of a two-parter on my channel the first one was about non-fiction books and I go into a lot more detail about where the idea for this video came, across, came from um, kind of my theory about bad reviews in general and kind of their place within the re reviewing landscape and just generally have a bit more of a conversation so I'm not going to repeat that today because I don't want to kind of rehash old ground instead we're going to jump straight in with the books and these are all a bunch of fiction books that I had a bit of a meh lukewarm or indeed completely negative response to but that I do still think are worth reading and something that if you're a fan of my channel you probably would enjoy also please ignore the change of angle it's freezing in my house even though the heating is on so I'm literally pressed up against my radiator because I'm so cold and as soon as I'm done filming the videos I need to get done today I'm gonna go wrap myself up in like 20 layers because oh my god British winter sucks so anyway the first book the first book is The Future of Another Timeline by Anna Lee Newitz. This is a time travel book and it is um, basically a world where uh, a collection of women are trying to um, defeat basically a, a misogynistic group of men who are trying to rewrite the timeline to completely remove a bunch of rights from women and it follows a collection of kind of different um, ways that they go about doing that. The reason I didn't particularly enjoy this book is because I don't think that the time travel is particularly strong in it. I think it's wildly inconsistent and wraps itself up in a couple of really really horrible paradoxes because there are multiple points where entire timelines have been overwritten but some people within depending on like what time stream they were in can remember the events of that and some people can't and then there's also weird things where people from the future come back but the information doesn't like get imparted across which I just think is kind of wildly unrealistic for how I think the flow of information would happen if time travel was real however I do think that the characters are really really cool I think that the idea is quite good fun and there's kind of a little bit of a mystery subplot going on that's also really interesting so it's one that if you do like character driven people I do think character driven people character driven books I do think that this will be one for you and if you're happy to roll with some of the sci-fi ideas but don't mind some of the inconsistencies within them again this could be a good one I just find time travel is a plot device that is very very hard to pull off successfully and I don't think that this book does that. The recurring theme of this video is probably going to be most of these books were very character driven and I generally don't care that much about characters and one of those is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. This is the perfect book for you if you like super spooky gothic atmospheric reads and also if you're interested in the interaction between science and religion which means it should have really been up my street but I felt like the gothic element wasn't explored enough there was kind of hints for supernatural that didn't really go anywhere and I didn't really think that the conversations between science and religion were fully explored enough either. For me that the atmosphere and the kind of meandering hanging out with the two main characters just wasn't enough to keep me interested and when I got to the end of the book I really felt like well what was the point in that however if you are a big fan of people like Laura Purcell a little of the kind of gothic writing out there I do think this one will be up your street because atmosphere wise it is fantastic and if you do like really slow character driven stuff again this is going to be completely perfect for you a book that is very much the case of feeling like I was missold to is The Binding by Bridget Collins this is about a kind of historical um, fantasy kind of world where you can have your memories removed and they end up being bound in a book and it's kind of the only way that books really exist and they get taken out of your head and then put down in book form but it obviously means that anybody can read those and the way that you can get your memories back is by having those books destroyed fantastic sounding premise right I thought that it was going to be a really interesting exploration of how that would pan out within society but what it actually really is at its heart is a kind of tortured gay romance between our two sort of main characters and this idea of trying to hide it from themselves and what was kind of expected in the society and things like that. Now don't get me wrong I thought that what Bridget Collins was doing was really really good and I do think that it is a good read that a lot of people have enjoyed and I thought that the romance was very beautiful and touching. I thought that the, the overall story was very strong but I was really hoping that we would explore the ideas a bit more about these books having your memories bound up with it what does that mean about your memories it kind of explores some of the sort of moralistic um, potential there for you know people having crimes committed against them and then forcibly removed from them all sorts of things that the, the author like very briefly touched on that I just wanted to spend way more time with so I left this book feeling a kind of strong sense of frustration because I felt like th there was so much more interesting material left on the table and I said we spent the entire book looking at this particular romance between these two men. 
However, if you are more of a kind of romance driven person, I think that this would work for you. A booktube darling that just totally did not work for me is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This I listened to on audiobook and I would recommend it in audiobook form because I do think it's stronger that way and it is basically kind of a behind the music style look at this fictional band Daisy Jones and the Six which were actually two separate bands the six and a, a, a kind of a singer Daisy Jones who ended up collaborating on a particular album and going on tour and the idea is that there is this potential affair going on between Daisy Jones and Billy the lead singer of the six and the ways that this kind of rips the band apart in sort of a, a slightly Yoko Ono-y kind of style um, However, I did not enjoy this because I just didn't really like any of the main characters. I thought that the sort of love triangle was fairly weak. I thought that the idea that this would fully rip apart the band was fairly weak. And again, similar to The Binding, I felt like that there were far more interesting conversations left on the table that Daisy Jones really didn't discuss. There were kind of vague conversations about the idea of like music in the 60s and 70s, the role of women within music, the idea of owning your sexuality or it being owned by corporations, etc, etc. There was kind of a lot of stuff that could have been a lot more interesting except it just wasn't explored and instead we spent an inordinate amount of time with Billy and Daisy being interviewed with this kind of post hoc look back it also was really really driving home the idea of like memories are fallible people kind of remember stories in different ways there's lots of kind of snippet interviews with various people who are all unreliable narrators in their own way and I like that as a kind of general conversation, but I really felt like the point was very, very, very laboured. However, I'm totally in a minority when it comes to Daisy Jones and the Six. Most people really, really enjoyed it. And I do think that the audiobook is fantastic. It's a full cast. It works really well because the entire book is like interview transcripts. So I think it would work really well in that audiobook format. It's that kind of um, like telling kind of style. Um, and yeah, it's something that I think potentially do listen to the hype and check it out because I am most definitely in a minority here and people clearly clicking with it for a reason. Another one that I want to talk about is Severance by Ling Ma. So this is a post-apocalyptic fiction where humanity has got caught they become these kind of zombie-esque creatures that get caught in the same kinds of loops so they'll repeating the same sort of actions over and over again to the de detriment of sleep food water to the point where they die but then their reanimated corpses will keep doing it as well and it is a mixture of um kind of telling before this event has occurred with this particular woman and then following her afterwards i think she might be pregnant and i think it's trying to her like working out if she wants to bring a kid into this world or not i can't fully remember i read it two years ago now so that one might be mixing up a different dystopian book um but basically this one if you are a fan of post-apocalyptic fiction i think it does the post-apocalypse side of things the kind of survivalist style fiction perfectly well you know you've got that kind of small group uh, limited resources kind of um conversation going on there and that side of things i thought was completely fine i just think the idea of like this constant comparison the author was making between sort of the life pre-apocalypse and post-apocalypse and the side of like how different is it actually and aren't we all just slaves and cogs and a big machine constantly repeating the same meaningless tasks in our life over and over again with no sense of wonderment or connection and oh aren't we mobile phone droids and that whole conversation for me felt very very tired and very like in comparison to other books that I think I've done it better I just felt that it was a little bit lacklustre for basically everything it was doing however if you're a fan of post-apocalyptic fiction I think it's good enough to like be worth your time to read especially if you're like a hardcore fan of that genre I'm somebody who reads a bit of it but I know some people really really like to go for it and I guess if you haven't read much in the whole idea of like um, commentary on a current societal state then it is bringing up some interesting points it's just for me I think I read it too late down the line of like other things that I've read that for me it isn't bringing anything novel or new to the conversation or to the table it's just kind of rehashing some of the same ideas so it's it's perfectly well written it just really depends on like how much do you like this genre because I don't think it's a particularly good example of either kind of genre so it's if you really really enjoy that kind of stuff and you want to read a lot of it this one's totally worth it but if you only want to read like the real sort of top level stuff from that genre I don't think this is it and then one that I really cannot articulate particularly why I didn't like it and this again I had it in my last video some things on paper they should tick every box and they just don't and for me that was Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield I was so confident I was going to enjoy this one that it was on my five star predictions video for fiction this was again a couple of years ago now and 
I did not care for this book particularly at all. I was bored through the majority of it, which was really unfortunate. It is about, it's kind of a historical fiction where a young man brings a, a very young girl who he's found, who he believed was dead from the river, into this kind of bar pub area, kind of in tavern. What other words can I come up with? Um, and she's 100% she's dead, definitely dead, and then she suddenly comes back to life. And it's sort of about some of the kind of magic around that, and then what is her identity, who does she belong to, it's a little bit of conversation about motherhood in there as well. And basically, I just didn't really care. I felt like there was some kind of supernatural element that wasn't fully explored, and again, I was really hoping for it to be more supernatural than it actually was. Um, there's kind of conversations about like story and folklore, and I basically just wasn't really bothered about anything that was going on, and none of the characters particularly connected with me but this is another one where I am in a massive minority and many many people have deeply deeply enjoyed this book including people whose tastes I normally really align with which is why I was so confused when I didn't actually enjoy it so if you are a fan of kind of the gothic fiction out there and you like your historical fiction to be quite dark quite moody quite atmospheric with a little bit of supernatural thrown in like my reaction to this and my reaction to the Essex Serpent were almost identical so I think if you liked the sound of either one of those you should definitely check this out and there we have it those are a collection of fiction books that for whatever reason just did not work for me but I think it depended on kind of what I've said about them here they might still actually work for you and there are many of my viewers who actually would really enjoy them so do you have any fiction out there that you really on paper should have been an absolute no-brain winner for you and then just completely did not hit the mark how do you feel about critical reviews or bad reviews within the reviewing landscape um, please do check out my non-fiction video to kind of hear my first sort of spiel about them because again like I said I can't be bothered to repeat it here and as is a semi new tradition on my channel let's ask you a random question at the end uh, last time we had what what we having for breakfast what's your plan for dinner tonight what's your plan for dinner and what's your favorite color let me know everything in the comments down below have a wonderful reading week and I'll certainly chat to you soon bye